It's a known fact that about 90% of Nigeria's revenue comes from oil. And anytime there is a fall in international oil prices, the country catches cold. Oil is basically the lifeblood of the Nigerian economy and has been since the 60s. But this over-dependence on crude oil has been a great source of worry for many. It is mainly because of that worry that this group of like-minded professionals, known as January 9 Collective, or J90 for short, called together this gathering to offer new perspectives into riddling the country of its over-dependence on oil. Our economy's near total dependence on oil is well documented. That Nigeria's oil wells will dry up approximately within the next three decades is equally a familiar positioning of experts and pundits. President Jonathan himself, on several recorded occasions, have expressed concerns over the nation's fast depleting oil reserves and acknowledge that it poses a major threat to the nation's economy. We seem to have failed as a country to realize early enough that hydrocarbons, fossil fuel, and mineral deposits all have a fixed lifespan and are certain to one day cease to exist. The only sustainable way out, ladies and gentlemen, is to accelerate our efforts towards urgently diversifying our economy towards renewable sources of revenue. Ironically, the group which has its roots at the 2012 infamous fuel subsidy protest in Ojata, Lagos, which caused the country a whooping 274 billion naira in eight days, invited guests from major sectors to speak exhaustively on a realistic approach on how Nigeria may survive post petrol dollar. And I will say to you that agriculture, the interest in agriculture is not really generated by us. It was something that was pushed internationally and we started running with it. But it's a good pointer because when the government decided to focus on ag agriculture, you could see some sort of response in that sphere. If you did that with every other sector, and there are many, many sectors, science, innovation, um, creative industry, and all of that, you will see that sort of um, change. It's been said that 30 years from now, there will be no need for the Nigerian oil or that industry will be dead. Now, 30 years to me is not infinite. That's a very limited time. So yes, we need to start looking beyond that. On the national scale, like I said, we are already doing what we need to do at the, at the National Assembly. In terms of our Greek, in terms of appropriation, that is one area we focus on. Over the years, we've always increased allocation to the Greek department. We believe that we need to go back to where we were from the beginning, because that was your question, where, where are we headed? Just go right back. You put the car right back into reverse and go back to where we were. The minority leader also spoke on the $100 benchmark leveled on by the government. The Consumer of Nigeria says that the benchmark, or rather that all, all revenues shall be put into a certain one account that is recognized by the Constitution, and that's the Federation account. But we'll not come up with this benchmark concept. Now what the benchmark does is this. You have $100, assuming you have $100 coming in from oil revenue. The government now sits down and says, of that 100 naira, there will be a threshold. We'll cut it off at $75. That is the benchmark. The remainder $25 We'll put into some illegal account that is not recognized by constitution or by any legal instrument. It's a clever way of getting around appropriation from the National Assembly. A very ingenious way which unfortunately the National Assembly itself has been caught napping and has done nothing about it. Now what the federal government does is as and when it pleases, it shares that excess crude oil to states, and the federal government makes use of the remainder, however, and whichever way he wants to use it. A panel of discussion which featured key individuals in different sectors talked about issues bordering on Nigerian economy, especially with Nigeria may survive after the oil wells allegedly dry up. 
if government can just bring out a few people who can see the direction that one, entertainment will employ more young people and make them vibrant. There will be no security threats. If this guy knows that as somebody who goes to the corporate sector, he can't get a job, but if he supports his brother who is talented as the manager, he's going to be employed. He's not going to be an armed robber. Some young guy up north who sees that Yoruba people are doing beautiful songs. Hausa people will also spring up and say, okay, ah, let's, we can sing our own tune and make way with it. There will be no Boko Haram. You need young people to do all these negative vices. But if they are structured and they are focused and they have direction and they can see that, okay, there's a future here. Entertainment is the only thing you can do till you die. Sonia Ade has been singing since my father was a kid. <laughs> Entertainment is evergreen. It affords all the opportunities you need from... Con and when you have entertainers, when you have entertainers, just, just to, you can to, actually yeah. direct the thoughts of the people. You can make them think the way you want them to think. You can give them values through entertainment, through music, through movies. And Nollywood is the biggest export we have right now in Africa. Since the discovery of shale oil in the United States, there has been an increased call on government to shift its attention to other sectors such as agriculture, tourism and even entertainment as economic analysts believe that demand for crude oil by international community and petrodollar gotten from these countries are certainly expected to dwindle. Petrodollar is a United States dollar earned by a country through the sale of its petroleum oil to another country. In Nigeria, it is expected to drop in the coming years. Thelma Okoro, TV 360, Lagos.